And of course, the big narrative of transformation, which has a lot to do with resilience. I also have a little book called It's Not the End of the World, uh, Developing Resilience in Times of Change. But what Gordy pointed out to me about narrative is that a transformative narrative has the shape of a smile. Uh, and actually, a tragedy has the shape of a frown. And the narrative arc of transformation, when somebody may have had an abusive childhood or a difficult illness like I had as a kid, or all those things that can happen to us, is here you are having life as usual, and then basically you fall down a hole. Or like the Dante quote, you enter a dark wood. And then you go, and that's the inferno that Dante wrote about, uh, is that moment where you're separated from life as usual, and it's a burning. And then you go down into a period of the purgatorio. And the purgatorio is a time of reflection. It's the place between no longer and not yet. And that's when our beliefs all come up, and beliefs that we might have held very, very dearly, very dearly, get questioned and crushed. And the purgatorio, I mean, it's like not a, not a, not a mysterious place for people who ate meat on Friday before it was allowable. Do you ever wonder what happens to all those people who were supposed to be in purgatory for eating meat and now that's been revoked? <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the Peanuts cartoon. This just brought up the, the funniest image of Lucy. Uh, and, and there is... She's looking at a picture of Adam and Eve, and they have belly buttons, and she says, just think about that. <laughs> Take as long as you like. So, <laughs> I'm feeling frisky today. I don't know. <laughs> I figure the chances of being burned at the stake are slim here. <laughs> in, in any case, um, <laughs> we're back at the purgatorio. It's an amazing time. We all need purgatory time. I think we should start a spa called the Purgatorio <laughs> Spa, in which you take time out to reflect on your life. But after you've fallen into the inferno, you can't get out until you traverse that territory between no longer and not yet. And in terms of, of a rite of passage, that's called liminal time, from the Latin limen or threshold, it's the threshold of being in a new place, but you're not there yet. And then you come out at the end of that time into the paradiso, and one of the things, <laughs> I wrote a book called Fried ab about this all. And here's how I got very interested in Dante, and then we'll link it all back to narrative and meaning. There is a method to my madness here. But I got interested in Dante. I'd never, I'd never read the Inferno at all because I thought, gosh, I'd rather speak than write. What if I wrote my next book by just dictating it into my computer? And my book, Fried, came out several years back, and the programs for dictation really weren't very good, so I didn't do it. But no matter how many times I said to the computer, burnout, the damn thing kept typing out inferno. <laughs> and I thought, there's nothing new. My computer ch channels all the time. <laughs> and so I thought, Inferno, Inferno, I think I'll look up Dante. And then I realized, oh my goodness, there's the shape of the smile, that you go from the Inferno to the time of reflection and the Purgatorio, where you do your work of integration, and then you come out into the 
Paradiso. And you're not the same person who went in there. You come out transformed. And that, by the way, has a lot to do with resilience because the, the usual way of viewing resilience is kind of like a kind of stress hardiness that you're able to roll with the punches and survive difficult times and literally bounce back. But I'd say resilience is more than bouncing back. It's transformation. Trans 